evaluating the reliability and validity of evidence presented in the media. Assessing the reliability and validity of media information requires proven procedures, reliable tools, and proven techniques. To deal with this challenge, we need to be familiar with the specifics of spreading disinformation in the digital environment. Familiarity with databases, digital applications, and online resources for verifying text, photos, and video material offered in the media is also essential. Five main ways to confirm the evidence offered in the media are presented by verifying the origin, the source, the date, the location, and the motivation for publication. Applying them is extremely important for determining the origin of the information and the type of the source, as well as for critically evaluating the information providers for authenticity, authority, and credibility. Infodemic, disinformation chaos, post-truth era. There are many terms with which media observers and analysts try to name the information environment in which we live. Regardless of what we call it, one thing is certain. The possibilities for deception and manipulation of public opinion have never been more diverse than today. The COVID-19 pandemic that broke out in China in late 2019 clearly highlighted this problem at a global level. In a matter of weeks, the digital media environment became a conduit for myths, manipulative and sensationalist claims, irresponsible political statements and outright lies, many of which have the potential to influence people to make decisions that are dangerous to themselves and those around them. That is why in the modern globalized, commercialized world, when encountering a carrier of information, everyone should be able to ask themselves questions related to the authorship and ownership of the media product, the interest behind it, the messages which are sent and with their value. This is where critical thinking and media literacy come to the rescue, teaching us to ask the right questions and get the right answers. The concept of fact-checking or verification gained popularity outside the media as a result of the digital revolution and the accompanying wave of disinformation. We live in a paradox. On the one hand, consumers have never had faster access to a variety of information. On the other hand, it has never been easier to mislead them intentionally or not. In parallel with the numerous authoritative and independent information sources that we can find online, a complex system of propaganda pages, fake profiles, troll factories, followers of conspiracy theories, and other polluters of the information environment live on the web. They use a mix of communication channels to manipulate the public opinions. The fact that traditional media increasingly rely on content generated by social media users, especially when covering hot events, further increases the risk of misleading and universified information reaching a large audience. So, in parallel with the numerous methods of information manipulation, journalists, technologists, and online enthusiasts are creating digital tools for fact-checking, whether it concerns text, photos, video, audio, or geolocation. Before we are convinced of the truth of the information that has attracted our attention in the media, in no case should we share it. So, the specifics of spreading disinformation in the digital environment. For this, we will refer to the methodology for categorizing the different types of disinformation developed by Claire Wardle, director of the American office of the world's leading organization, First Draft, specialized in fact-checking. In her essential guide to understanding disinformation chaos, she divides disinformation into three main subtypes that are often intertwined. They are... Misinformation. Unintentional errors, such as incorrect photo titles, dates, incorrect statistics or translation, reference to satirical sites as actual information sources. In 2015, numerous Bulgarian media published news that the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia had allowed men to eat their wives. 
A basic check of the original source of this information, which also leaked in countries such as Italy and Great Britain, shows that months before the release in our country, it was published by an Egyptian satirical site. This did not prevent it from making its way to the central broadcasts of leading Bulgarian channels. Next is disinformation. It is fabricated or deliberately manipulated audio or video content, which is deliberately spread rumors and conspiracy theories. The infodemic surrounding the global coronavirus crisis is rich with examples of misinformation. One of them is the rumor that the virus is spreading through the antennas for 5G mobile coverage, which has gained widespread popularity and it even led to the destruction of similar cell towers by frightened citizens in countries such as the United Kingdom, for example. In the third place, it's malinformation. Intentional publication of personal information in the name of personal or corporate interest. Deliberately altering the context, the date or time of publication of the authentic content. A good example is the publication of parts of the personal correspondence of U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. It led to a large-scale campaign against her, including through specially created websites, and that ultimately contributed to her defeat in favor of the U.S. President Donald Trump. It is important for everyone to be able to recognize the different types of disinformation because their characteristics and potential to harm society can help us judge whether it is worth paying further attention to a piece of information and investing time and resources in verifying its veracity. There are proven procedures, reliable tools and proven techniques for assessing the validity of media information. All too often, the sources behind a certain publication are wrong, so interviews with them should be accompanied by documents. With the advent of information technology, documentation has also changed. The availability of cell phones and security cameras increased the amount and importance of video documentation. Technology has also changed the way we find and deal with sources of information. We can use the new tools effectively by combining them with the old methods of asking questions and checking multiple online sources. For this purpose, keyword tracking tools such as TweetDeck can be used, for example, which help in the search for reliable users, law enforcement, primary sources, etc. There are five main ways of verification and confirmation. Part of First Draft's cross-check initiative, the Top Rules for Online Fact-Checking Handbook, outlines five basic steps to follow when checking a video, photo, material, social media profile, or other form of digital content. All of these are key to our analysis of assessing the validity and reliability of evidence. A large number of official pages of celebrities in social networks are marked as original with a shield icon. To check if an account is actually verified, we need to hover over the blue tick and then we'll see the text account verified. If it is missing, the account is not verified. But even with official programs, there is no quick way to verify that the source is real, other than manually analyzing all available profile details. Googling for individual phrases of the text we are checking can help us find other sites where the post has appeared. And from there, we can find out which of them is the oldest. The next step is to understand who is behind the site and what interests lie behind each site along the news channel. Who is and register.bg search engines can help us. In an age where information floods us 24-7, photos and videos are proving to be one of the most powerful weapons for impact. We need to be highly critical of images and videos that reach us without a clear source. The reverse lookup option for images is a key fact-checking tool. It allows us to check a photo in an image search engine to find when and how it's been used before. Thus, we can find out if it's an old image stitched to a news, an approach often used by the media. 
The next step in image verification is the metadata, all the technical information that was left in the file when it was created. The most popular reverse image search platform is Google Images, but other similar search engines like Yandex and Beidou can also be used. The tiny.com site is specifically made for reverse lookup and source discovery. The question of where and when a photo or video was taken can be key when trying to verify its authenticity. Determining the geographical location of a user or device connected to the internet allows us to find the answer to this very question through the use of publicly available platforms. When confirming geolocation, we need to know that only a small percentage of content is automatically geolocated, but mapping platforms such as Google Street View can help. And motivation. Why was the content created? What motivation or interests might be behind the site, the profile or post that caught our interest? The more we can learn about each of these components, the more robust our fact-checking results will be. Information always has many sides, and the more valuable it is, the more it is subject to manipulation. No matter how authentic the news, a photo or video seems, no matter how many people support your political, aesthetic or moral understandings, do not completely trust what is written or seen. Be skeptical. Be wary of posts that completely match your ideas about life. They are often too perfect to be true. Apply at least some of the techniques described.